Hi, and welcome to Exam Revision Saturday Sessions. Uh, in this session, we're going to be looking at Tropical Rainforest Characteristics Sample Answer. So we're going to be looking at a question that could come up uh, based on your biome question, uh, based on Tropical Rainforest, um, and it's the four main characteristics that are contained in the Tropical Rainforest. Okay, so this is going to be looking at an 80 mark question, essay question for this, and how we would go about answering one. So the first thing just to look at is basically the layout of an exam uh, paper. Um, in normal year, obviously, the last couple of years, there have been uh, 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 kind of alters or kind of changes to the paper um, with regards to COVID and things like that. <clears throat> so what we're basically looking at is how much each section is worth, how much time you should be spending on each section um, and what it's worth in percentage wise. Um, so you've got your short questions worth 80 marks, 16%, and you should be spending about half an hour on that. You've got your physical geography, also worth 80 marks, 16%, half an hour spent on that. Uh, a, B, and C uh, questions. Same for your regional, worth the same amount, uh, 30 minutes again for A, B, C question. And then you're going to have your economic elective or another elective that you may choose. Okay, so you might have your human elective. And again, that's the exact same ABC question. It's going to be worth 80 marks and it's going to be 16% of the total paper uh, when you include the field study. And again, you're going to spend 30 minutes on that. In terms of what we're looking at here, we're looking at the geocology section, specifically uh, the rainforest biome. And again, it's worth 80 marks. It's 16% of the overall paper in terms of the marks. But you see that we spend a little bit longer our geocology section that we in fact spend 40 minutes on this actual part of the exam and the reason for that is that this is a longer essay than the 30 mark essays it's one essay so we need to spend enough time on this because there is going to be a good bit of writing there's going to be a good bit of preparation uh putting the right structure to our essay so we need to give ourselves an extra 10 minutes to ensure that we do a good job on a geocology essay so this is why this is so important and why the focus of our Saturday session is on this. So in total, you're spending about two hours, 40 minutes of writing time on an exam. And then you're spending 10 minutes also reading over the questions, picking your questions and uh, making sure you're reading the question correctly because so many people don't read the question correctly and then as a result make mistake when answering the question don't answer the question that's actually asked so that's vitally important that you do do that just also note that the field study that you will be doing uh, will be worth 100 marks and that is worth 20 percent so it is the largest section really of the paper so it's important that you do do a good field study in class time and you do put a, a major effort and emphasis on that when that's all tied up, then you got a total of 500 marks for the entire geography paper um, in, in, in total. So you, we can see the importance of our geocology section there in terms of the amount of time that's going to actually take to do this particular uh, question. So when we were talking about the geocology section, we're talking about questions 16, 17, 18. So it's important that before, before you go into the actual exam that you have a good knowledge of the paper in terms of its layout. So the questions we're going to be focusing on are going to be found in this section. Now, normally the geocology question is question 18. However, this does change from year to year. Um, for example, last year it was not question 18, it was another question. So we have to be aware of that. And again, just to reiterate that you're going to be spending 40 minutes on this particular question more than any other part or section on the paper. So question 16, 17, 18, you know to go directly there if you're looking to answer this particular question. In terms of the marking scheme, you are marked depending on what way you structure your answer. Now, the way the question is asked can sometimes impact on how you structure your answer. But there are two main ways that you are going to be possibly answering this question. So you can choose to do three aspects or you can choose to do four aspects. What we basically mean by aspects is sections. 
So are you going to split your question into three sections or are you going to split your answer into four um, sections? If you choose to do three different parts to your question or basically uh, look to do three different topics within the question, you will be marked at 20 marks per question. So that's 60 marks then in total when it comes to the three aspects. Identifying an aspect, okay, per section is worth four marks. So by identifying what you're going to be talking about, you're going to get four marks for that. So for example, if I'm talking about characteristics of the biome, I am talking about maybe uh, the climate. I could be talking about animals and I could be talking about plants. So when we do those three aspects, we're going to get four marks for talking about climate. So we'll get those for just identifying climate. We'll, ident we'll get four marks for that. For identifying animals, we'll get four marks. And when we identify plants, we'll get four marks as well. So that's very important to note. So you're going to split your answer into those three different sections and you get four marks for actually just having a heading on your section based on identifying that aspect. Now, within each of those three sections, you've got to get a number of SRPs, so standard relevant points. You have got to get eight SRPs per, per question or per aspect even. And an SRP is a well-developed point, statistical piece of information or a fact. And you need eight of them to get the full marks within each aspect. So eight by two marks, which is what you get for an ASR, SRP, is 16 marks. Couple that up with your four marks for identifying the aspect gives you 20 marks. So three aspects at 20 marks then gives you the 60 out of 80. The remaining 20 marks comes from a thing called overall coherence or OC marks. And OC marks are basically marks that are awarded for answering the question correctly. So answering the question that is asked and also putting your answer in the correct structure. So basically breaking your answer, in this case, into three different sections or three different aspects. If you do that correctly, you will get the full 20 marks for OC. So it's very important that we have a good structure in our answer, that we have um, gaps between each of our sections, that we skip a line between each of our section, sections, and that for each of the sections or aspects that we have a title on each of them. So for example, climate, is one title, you, you write about that, you skip a line, you go into animals, you skip a line, you talk about plants in terms of three characteristics that we could talk about. However, if we talk about four aspects, so for example, we talk about climate, we talk about animals, we talk about plants, but we also talk about soils in terms of the four characteristics of the tropical rainforest, well, then we're going to get marked slightly differently. So we're going to have four aspects or four sections at 15 marks each instead of 20. You're going to identify the aspect and you'll get three marks for that. Okay, so for identifying climate, three marks. Identifying plants, three marks, animals, soils, etc. You're then, within each of those aspects or each of those sections, you're going to have to get six SRPs rather than eight. So six by two marks then is 12 marks. And that will then get you to the 15 marks. Again, you have your overall coherence marks that you have to get. That's 20 marks in total. And then that again is awarded for when you answer the question correctly, when you've got plenty of detail in your answer and you've put a good structure on your answer. So those OC marks are vitally important in order to get to the full 80. So for the purpose of this session, we're going to focus on an answer that is going to be four aspects rather than looking at three. So we're going to look at four characteristics um, or aspects in an answer to this particular question on the characteristics of the tropical rainforest. Now, there will actually be enough in each section uh, to get enough marks if we're going to do three okay, aspects. Okay, So we're going to show plenty of detail in our answers more than enough so we can even adapt this sample answer that i'm going to show you um if it was an, a question that required three aspects 
Okay, but just to reiterate, we're going to be doing four aspects. So that means we're going to be doing 15 marks each per aspect. And that means that we're going to get three marks for identifying uh, an aspect. So we get four of them would be 12 marks. We're going to get six SRPs at least in each of those aspects. And then we're going to get our remaining 20 marks from our overall coherence because we're going to have a good structure on our answer. And we're going to answer the question that is basically being asked. So four aspects, each aspect, three marks for naming them, and then six SRPs at two marks each is the most important thing. If we get that right, then the overall coherence is going to look after itself because we'll have a good structure on our answer and we'll have basically got enough points in there to pick up the marks that are required for this question. So to look at the different types of questions that could potentially come up for us, these are all the different questions really are the six questions that we've got to be worried about when it comes to in terms of our geocology section. So that includes both biomes and soils. So you can see there you've got your four characteristics of biome, which is the question we're going to look at. We've got human interaction with a biome. We've got plants and animal adaptations. We've got development of soils, composition and characteristics factors influencing soil development and effects of human activities on soils as well. So there are the six potential questions and only three will come up on the geocology section of the paper. So it's question 16, 17, 18. Three of these are going to come up and generally it's going to be two soil questions and one biome question. But again, that can change depending on the year. Now, what we're going to focus on is we're going to focus on the biome questions. So we're going to forget about the soils, focus on the one biome question that can come up, and it's going to be one of these trees. It's just to narrow down our studies for ourselves. So it could be plants and animal adaptations. It could be human interaction with a biome or four characteristics of a biome. And what we're going to focus on in this video session is we're going to focus on the four characteristics of a biome it comes up quite a bit, um, so it is a very common question that gets asked. So it would be important for us to focus in on this question and have a good sample answer put together before entering into the exam. So to reiterate, these are the three questions that could possibly come up for us. And then again, we're focusing on that four characteristics of a biome question. So we're looking at climate, we're looking at flora, we're looking at fauna, and we're looking at soils. So climate is one characteristic of a biome. So we're going to have to focus in on that. The flora, so the types of plants and trees, okay, that are found within the tropical rainforest. Fauna, the different types of animals. And then the soil that is also found in the tropical rainforest as well. So all of these is what we're going to be focusing on when it comes to our essay. And they're going to be our four aspects or sections that we're going to break our essay up into. So again, that's the actual marking scheme that the um, exam corrector is going to be looking at when they're correcting your question. So whether you're going to do three aspects or four aspects, the overall coherence is going to be in there. So just to be aware of that before you go into the actual exam. So this is the question that we're going to be looking at here. As you can see, it's asking us about the four characteristics of a tropical rain forest so that's what we're going to be doing now now the first thing you want to do when it comes to looking at this question is you want to identify the type of biome that you're going to be focusing in on and give an example of it so at the very top there you see that we've done that so this kind of nearly would be an introduction line that you're going to write in you're going to say that the biome that i have studied is a tropical rainforest biome uh, an example of that would be the Amazon rainforest found in South America, Brazil. Okay, so that would be even where you might pick up a couple of SRPs just for saying that, a couple of marks. And also for your OC, it's very important that you actually state that before you begin the exam or, or begin your question, your answer to the question. We then go into breaking up our uh, question or answer into our four aspects. So at the very top of our first paragraph or our next paragraph, we're going to write aspect one, climate. So the first thing we're going to talk about 
is we're going to talk about climate. Now, within the marking scheme, there's an allowance for you to do two sketches. Now, I would say that you probably should do one sketch at the very end of your exam, and that sketch should be of the four different layers of the tropical rainforest, which you would have looked at at the first session, which was looking at um, our different characteristics of the rainforest and adaptations. So that first session video, that sketch is in there, and that is the sketch that you want to put at the end of this particular essay. All right. Now you can put other sketches there. Could be sketches of particular plants, butters' roots, um, or anything like that. Any particular topic within uh, the rain, tropical rainforest. But if you do one, that'd be more than enough. And then what we have in this sample answer, even though it's broken down into six SRPs each, with more than six SRPs per each section, if you go into the actual detail, and you'd probably be awarded more than the marks that are allotted here. Okay. But that's the first thing just to note that you can do a sketch at the end of your exam or your end of your uh, question. So the first kind of written points we're making here are as follows. Okay, so the first thing that we're saying about climate is that latitude plays a big part in terms of the tropical rainforest climate. So in terms of latitude, the sun is at a very high angle in the sky over areas near the equator, where we know this is where we find the tropical rainforest. The sun is nearly or directly overhead during the year. The sun's heat is concentrated over a limited area. Ground surface heats up quickly, and daytime is about 12 hours each day exposing the ground surface to the daily direct heat. Now, within that point there, we're probably going to get even more than one SRP, potentially, Okay, but we'll definitely get one SRP out of that. But we were making a well-developed point, as you can see in those couple of sentences. But we're also backing up what we're saying by giving a, 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 an actual fact. So 12 hours of uh, sunlight each day, that is giving a, an actual fact. OK, that is something that definitely happens. So you pick up an SRP even for saying that. The next thing we're talking about is high rainfall levels. So the rainforest region receives high annual convectional rainfall levels between 2,000 and 6,500 millimeters per year. Rainfall occurs throughout the year and wet seasons are the months which have the highest rainfall. For example, the wettest period in Amazon is from December to April and March is the wettest month, 300 millimeters in 21 days. We also have something that is called the tropical convergence zone. So variations in rainfall are caused by the shifting positions of the intertropical convergence zone, the ITCZ. And this is a low air pressure zone that lies close to the equator. The heat from the sun causes the warm air to rise, cool and condense to form cumulombus clouds. These clouds bring heavy rainfall 180 days a year, with the months with the most rainfall called wet seasons. In the Amazon rainforest, this is during the months of December and April, or to December to April. Variations in rainfall are caused by the ITCZ changing position throughout the year. And again, all our points are backed up with facts, like 180 days a year, so that's all very important. High temperatures, a small annual temperature range of two degrees. That means the temperature only changes by about two degrees, which is very small. And example, in Manaus, the average temperature in January is 26 degrees and in August is 27. So the temperature basically stays the same throughout the whole year. The daily temperature range is 10 degrees. So between daytime and nighttime, there's a change of 10 degrees, which again, in general, is quite small. So we get quite kind of standard amount of uh, temperature range, okay? Um, so temperature doesn't change too much, which, which allows a lot of growth, which we see in the tropical rainforest. For Manaus, the daytime average maximum temperature is 33 degrees Celsius, and the average night minimum temperature is 23 degrees Celsius. Again, given facts, given figures to back up our points. The humidity is relatively high, averaging between 77 and 88%. Direct sunlight, Manaus City receives daily average of five hours. 
So there you have it. You have well-developed points. You have statistical pieces of information. You have facts. You have figures to back up everything we're saying. And there's definitely more than six SRPs in there for that particular section, meaning we're going to pick up the relevant amount of SRPs that we need. And we need six. OK, now in your own essay, you can see that this is broken up into six points. We've got them numbered in your own essay. You don't need to do that. You can have just this particular section and then you will write out your uh, paragraph based on climate. You don't need to number it. OK, and it would be advisable not to number it. Just have it written in an essay format so that you will pick up your OC marks because you would be putting them at risk if you wrote it like this. But for the basis of actually showing how to answer this question to you, I've got them numbered here just to make it easier for you to follow and show you where the SRPs are coming from. So once we've got that first section completed, we then skip a line and we're then going to get into our second section or our second aspect. So it's very important that you skip a line and then you write your next heading. So you see that our next heading then, aspect two, fauna. Okay, so we're going to be talking here about our animals. So again, we're going to break this down into our different SRPs to make sure that we're going to get the marks that we're going to need. So the first thing that we've noted here is sketch two. So again, as I said before, you're allowed two sketches. So you can put a second sketch in at the end of this particular answer if you want, or you can just put one maybe sketch in if you prefer. But within this answer, we've got more than enough um, basic points made here. So we'll definitely get more than the six SRPs in terms of actual writing, in terms of facts, statistics, and piece of information, well-developed points that we're going to make here. So. The first point we're making here in terms of written is the characteristics of fauna are and is estimated that these 50 percent of all living species in the world are found in the rainforest, even though the biome accounts for just six percent of the Earth's surface. The next thing to say is that the wide biodiversity of this biome is due to the good living conditions in this natural environment. The environment allows natural habitats and ecosystems to develop that support a wide range of species of fauna and animals. For example, mammals like gorillas and birds, toucans, reptiles like snakes, amphibians like frogs. So again, we're giving examples there to back up the point that we're making. The next point that we're making is that a typical square kilometer of rainforest is found to contain 40 birds, five butterflies, and 10,000 insect species. The forest floor is covered in dead leaves, and so decomposers break down the humus and produce nutrients for the plants, which helps them grow. Animals have adapted. For example, the flying fox has developed flaps of skin between the front and back legs, allowing them to jump from tree to tree and glide for long distances. This influences the biome, as animals will knock against plants as they move, which can help build up dead plants on the forest floor, which they can produce nutrients or be a seed and start the growth of a new plant. The final point we're making about animals is that animals such as jaguar can be found on the forest floor of a rainforest, and jaguars are good swimmers, which enables them to be able to navigate through flooded swamps and to catch their prey. So again, all well-developed points made there, some facts and figures to back up what we're saying, and then most importantly for this section, lots of examples of different animals that are found within the Amazon rainforest that we can use to show our knowledge, and show the examiner that we know what we're talking about. And we'd be hopeful, very hopeful, of getting more than six RPs in there, six SRPs in there, so that we're going to get the full marks for again for this particular section. Then what we do is we skip a line and then we begin our third aspect or our third section. Then the third aspect and third section, then we're going to talk about is soil. So again, I've skipped my line. I put in aspect three, okay, and soils as my heading. So we begin to talk then about soils um, in terms of our third aspect. Straight away, we put in the example in terms of what the soil is in Amazon rainforest. And it is a tropical red soil or latosol. So putting latosol straight in there is going to get us an SRP. Lattisol is very deep, weathered soil that is red or yellowish in color, a 
and this is a type of zonal soil. This refers to a mature soil that has developed within a climate zone over a long period of time. And they usually have a well-developed soil horizon, A, B, and C. So O is at the very top, your surface of your soil. A is just below that, the most fertile part of the soil. B is where it becomes a bit more rockier, okay? And then C is the actual permanent rock at the very, very bottom that has not become weathered yet and hasn't turned into soil. So there are the sections of the soil. The soil structure, unlike other soils, lattice soils do not have a standard structure. This is because the parent rock varies across biome regions. Structures can vary from loose to platy to block or crumb structures. And in Amazon rainforests, clay soils often have a crumb or loose structure. So therefore, they can be vulnerable to erosion from rain. Soil acidity, lattice soils are moderately acidic with a pH value of about five. Acidity is mostly due to exposure to high rainfall and humic acids from decaying matter. Deforestation increases the soil acidity. Soil texture, lattice soils have a var varied texture, for example, clay and sandy, and this depends on the parent rock. Amazon rainforest soils are mostly made up of clay, for example, kaolin, with a sticky texture. In terms of the color, lattice soils tend to be a red color form below the topsoil to above the parent rock. This color is caused by oxygen in the water reacting with iron and aluminium. So oxidation basically is what that is called. The final point we can make then on soils is that the humus content. Lattice soils have a low humus content and humus is mostly found at or near the surface. Most humus decays quickly or is absorbed by the root systems of plants as a nutrient source. So again, we've got six well-developed, well-made points backed up in this particular section. That is be the third aspect, okay? So again, we skip a line and we then move on to our final section, our final aspect in order to complete this particular question. So the final aspect that we're going to talk about is aspect four, flora. So again, we put that as our title on top of this particular section. We are then going to try and get our six SRPs to complete this question and ensure that we're going to get the full marks. Remembering that we've got to get well-developed points in here and back it up with examples and also facts and figures. So the second example we're going to put in here that are that we're allowed here in the marking scheme. And we're going to say that there are 300 different types of tree species that have been found within an area of one kilometer squared in the Amazon rainforest. And these include mahogany, rosewood, para rubber, and palm, etc. So there's more there that can be found and mentioned as well. The second point we're making is about lianas. And lianas have adapted to the dark forest floor by attaching itself to a tree and getting a lift to the sunlight. They shoot at tiny sapling trees and grow with them to the canopy towards the sunlight. Vines grown from trees to tree can make up 40% of the actual canopy leaves. So they are very plentiful. Flooded areas in the Amazon rainforest, flooding occurs. Where the Amazon rises by up to 15 meters in the rainy season. Plants like water lilies have leaves wider than two meters. Mangrove swamps are common in coastal areas of Brazil, where the rainforest is flooded by salted waters. We then go into the four different parts of the rainforest that we looked at in a previous uh, Characteristics Saturday Sessions video. So again, we're probably going to add in even more SRPs here than we need. We're making sure that we're getting the full marks. Bearing in mind, we've got 40 minutes to write this answer. So we got, want to get as much detail in here as possible. So the first thing we're saying is the emergent layer. These are the tallest trees. They reach the heights of 50 meters, maybe even higher towards 80 meters we can put in also. They tend to be broad-leafed, hardwood evergreens, and their long tree trunks are often branchless. 
They grow apart from each other and are held in place by buttress roots. For example, Kapok trees. So putting in examples, backs up what you're saying, shows good knowledge to the examiner is going to ensure that you're going to pick up maybe an extra SRP. Second part is the canopy. This is a layer of continuous tree cover. Trees can reach heights of 30 to 40 meters. And the tops of the trees merge together to form a roof over the lower layers. The third part is the understory. The layer of the trees that can reach up to heights of 20 meters. These trees have adapted to living with less direct sunlight as they're in the shade of canopy trees. And the final thing we're saying here is the forest floor. And this is the plants and shrubs that can grow in the permanent shade. And it's estimated that less than 5% of the light reaches this level. Plants develop large leaves to absorb as much light as possible at this particular point in the tropical rainforest. So then you will have written your four different sections, your four aspects written up for this particular essay. You will finish it off by putting in a sketch of the four different layers of the tropical rainforest, so the emergent layer, canopy, understory, forest floor. You draw that in, as I showed you before, on the characteristics uh, detailed Saturday session video. And you will also label each of the sections to ensure that you get the full marks for that SRP. So you could get, for that sketch, you, you could get about two SRPs for that. So that's four marks you could potentially be getting for putting that in. Apart from that though, if you have done each of the four different aspects in the detail that has been covered here, if you write that sort of detail, you're going to get up the full marks anyway. So you get the full 60 marks. And if you've got it well structured, like it is there, you're going to pick up the extra 20 OC marks that are there also for answering the question correctly, answering the question that has been asked, and also having a really good structure to it, having plenty of examples, plenty of facts to back up what you're saying, statistics, um, will all add into that and you'll get those extra 20 OC marks. So it's very important that you do spend a full 40 minutes when answering this particular question, that you plan out your answer and that you have it split up into four different sections very clearly to the examiner so that they can see clearly that you um, what the four aspects are and award you the marks as such. If in the question it does state that they only want three characteristics, then leave one out. Let's say you're going to leave soils out, for example, and you're going to do the other three, flora, fauna, and climate. There is more than enough facts and figures and SRPs in each of those sections that I've shown you here to get you the full eight SRPs really for each of those sections. Have your sketch at the, at the end and you will hopefully pick up the full marks again with your OC marks. If you need more bits of information, again, go back to the previous Saturday sessions video that we looked at and covered in terms of characteristics within the rainforest and that will cover you even further. But this is a perfect sample answer for your four uh, aspects and you will just have to adapt it if it does ask for only three aspects. So I hope you found this sample answer um, helpful. Write it out for yourself in an essay structure so that you'll have a sample answer for yourself to follow back on. Um, learn it, go through it, revise it, and try and reproduce this in um, an exam situation to pick up your full 80 marks for your geocology section.